Hello, plant friends. So if you ever heard of Ikea and you've ever heard of cabinets, you know that nowadays people are modifying or hacking their Ikea cabinets to turn them into high humidity containing plant enclosures. So we're starting off Stephanie's plant tour and series by talking to two veteran hackers and putting thoughtful consideration into plant hacks you may or may not need for your plants. <laughs> Let's go. Are you already videotaping? Yeah, don't worry. It'll go away. Okay, okay. okay. Okay, well, hi, I'm Stephanie, and my Instagram is Steph's Plants. Hi, I'm Joanna. <laughs> I'm Joe Loves Plants on Instagram. We are in Steph's place, and she has very generously and kindly welcomed us. Yeah, let's explore what you have here. I see at least one Ikea cabinet that's very, very trendy right now. Uh, Steph, how, how did you get into the Ikea cabinet thing? From Joanna. When I started collecting, like I never thought about having an enclosure. I didn't really know what conditions plants needed other than some humidity. Like they were out in the open, I put them near humidifiers. But then I met Joanna and she had written a whole blog of like how to do an Ikea cabinet setup. I followed her instructions like a lot of it and got a lot of advice from her and then there's a whole community of like ikea greenhouse cabinet people how are your plans arranged before the, the ikea greenhouse age <laughs> well they weren't even in this room okay because um when i started collecting i had a housemate who lived in this room this was his bedroom and so all the plants were outside in the dining room and the living room and just like anywhere that had like a surface yeah Philodendrons and general like common house plants, they did fine. But once I got into anthuriums, I think my first my first one was an anthurium vecchii, and that one seemed to be acclimated to like pretty normal conditions already when I purchased it. Um, but when I got an anthurium regali, yeah, uh, it immediately showed that it was not happy in the conditions that I had, right. which was just out in the open, right? With, um, nothing special, and yeah. it like started like crisping around the edges and like yellowing and and that's when i started like reaching out to other people in the plant community to get um advice about what to do so jonna you have been a lot of time and effort you know with the ikea cabinet thing and you have a blog on it so you've been sharing your knowledge and helping other people do their ikea like diys why was it an ikea thing like there's plenty of other glass cabinets out there i think Biggest thing is probably the cost, because like if you look at glass cabinets from like other furniture companies, they tend to cost a lot more than these. Like the Millsbow, I think it's what like under two hundred dollars, and then there's other ones that are even. There's even like one that's under a hundred dollars. This is a this is a Millsbow, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and then the other part is that just because like it started getting popularized by that like IKEA greenhouse cabinet. Instagram and then uh -huh. also there was like um, I think it's called like the Kia Greenhouse Club Facebook group and it just started getting popularized right so that means that if you get this cabinet then there's a lot of like information out there already so right. you don't have to like figure out what accessories to get from scratch so it's just easier to set up if you just like get one of the standard cabinets that a lot of people already use and right. also it just kind of like it looks nice, right? Like a lot of people are using those right. um, like plastic greenhouse tents from Amazon that work, but they don't look as aesthetic and a right, lot of people, right. you know, are getting these expensive plants and so they probably want to showcase them nicely in their homes yeah. and so. Aesthetics is a thing, right? Like if you're talking about a hobby where you're spending a lot of time and effort with your plants, doing planting stuff, like aesthetics is a thing. It makes, uh, it's nice to have things to that are pretty, Pretty to look at. I am big on aesthetics, and then Jeff made fun of me because um, he's about function. It's all about <laughs> like for him, his his jungle and his setup isn't about like how it looks. It's about what's best for the plant, right? For how right. like it's gonna grow and thrive. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to find that balance because I'm not like only aesthetics, but I would like my plants to thrive and hopefully in a in a place that makes it look right. nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The green, the Millsbow cabinets, and like any of the IKEA hat cabinets. Um, I think what's nice is also because like we're growing them indoors, like unlike Floridans who can just have them outside yeah. and even just I think out and about in the house because of the high humidity. Um, but we we need something All to right. keep them enclosed. And then the the cabinets also aluminum, so it doesn't rust. As oh, much. 
Okay. I've actually I've actually actually seen some some rust on uh, some well, parts of these. I do of still have these. some. I do have rust, but it's mostly because of like it's exposed metal from like yeah. when I when we drilled the hole. Yeah. And Andrew put this together. Yeah. Like, there's other people have found ways to prevent rust, like um, spraying rust oleum and then some kind of wax. Yeah. Yeah. I think people also get rust issues when they put like a humidifier in their cabinet and there's actually like standing water in yeah. places. <laughs> So Jonah, when you bought yours, uh, do you did you buy it with the intention of like I am gonna hack the heck out of that? Is that yeah. is that you you did? Okay. Yeah, I, I bought it to keep plants in. Uh -huh. um, I think I saw the IKEA cabinet on a one of like philodendron enthusiasts or anthurium enthusiasts Facebook groups, and um, I just I, I had to do it. <laughs> I, I found one. I actually didn't get mine from IKEA. I got it from Craigslist. Somebody was selling one brand new and. I had just like started hearing about this, so right. it seemed like a sign. So I went and bought it, and then the rest is, you know, <laughs> the rest of it happened. Right. At the time that you got your cabinet, were there already a lot of guides out there, or were you trying to forward that DIY-ness in the plant community? So there were people who had definitely had like cabinets like way before me, and they were sort of sharing tidbits of knowledge here and there. but. As far as I knew, I couldn't find like a central place for like all the information about like, you know, what do you need to buy to set up like the minimum setup, like how much does everything cost? Right. Um, there, a lot of people were asking questions like, how do I keep the humidity up? Because if you just buy the cabinet, it by itself doesn't actually increase the humidity that much. You have to make some modifications to it. People were asking like, do I need a humidifier? Do I need to make all these modifications? How much of a difference will it make? Um, there wasn't sort of like a central place to like answer all these questions. Right. So when I made my cabinet, understandably a lot of other people who were building their cabinets started asking me a ton of questions and it was taking me a lot of time to answer them <laughs> and they often were like the same, same questions. questions. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, and so, and uh, I felt like I was writing all these like wordy responses that I wasn't even sure if like people wanted that much detail and so I decided to just like put it all in one place and now when people ask me questions I tell them read the lighting section of this blog post read the humidity section of this blog post so it saves me time and I think hopefully people will find it helpful as well one of um, the reoccurring things that people were was happening with people with their Millsbo cabinets was that the grow lights were falling onto the plants because hmm. um, a lot of people were using like uh, double-sided tape like strong gorilla tape hmm. uh, to hold the light up because of the humid, it's it's due to the humidity. It basically makes the tape not sticky anymore, oh. and then, so Andrew found these magnets. Um, right, they're which just stick like to the really top. hard. Yeah, they stick to the top of because the mag to the cabinet already, mm -hmm. um, and then they hold the light. They they clasp around the light, mm -hmm. and there's just like really not a lot of um, chance that it's gonna fall off. I think the greenhouse cabinet costs like close to two hundred, and mm -hmm. then. And then there's the um, the fans. Um, we Andrew also researched humidifiers, and um, he found a small little travel humidifier. Okay. Um, so it saves space, like mm. um, since a lot of the space is, mm. it's best to have as much plants as possible. Um, but if you if you weather strip the cabinet, then it holds the humidity in even better, and. Once it's filled with plants, they also mm -hmm. increase humidity with each other. So, our the humidifier is um, it's run on a sensor for it can set it to a certain um, percent of humidity, and it doesn't even need to it just doesn't even turn on because of all the the plants and the weather stripping. Actually, it gets too humid, mm -hmm. like it can go up to like ninety to one hundred, and it's probably a little too much for the plants. So I open the door mm -hmm. crack and like yeah. air it out. So, so how much does, uh, like when you're hacking this, like how much is the, the total, the total price of, uh, after all the hacks? Yeah, and I'd have to check my table to be sure, but I think it came out to around three to four hundred dollars mm -hmm. for one mils, but was that about the same? I think you? Andrew, for what he found out, it was like more, somewhere between four hundred or five hundred. I don't remember what it turned out to be exactly. When he was first researcher, he was like, one cabinet after the modification, he's like, it's gonna be like five hundred dollars. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think then he researched and found like some economic some, some other options. Stuff, but see, a lot of the things are optional. Like yeah. when you start out, like probably the basics that you need is just the cabinet, and I would say like a fan, right? Because you need air circulation in there, right. and if you have, you're gonna put it next to like a window with natural light. You might not even need grow lights, so right, right. it really depends on like what you need. Yeah, and a lot of people don't. Um, 
the cabinet comes with glass shelving already, mm -hmm. which is really aesthetic. Um, and you don't even need to switch it out, but a lot of people switch it out to these um, wire grids yeah. because it can have airflow from the bottom. Yeah. Is it easy to hack if you don't have any like hardware handyman kind of knowledge? <laughs> Or is it something that you, you sort of uh, have to have some tools? The biggest tool is definitely um, if, you want to, if you want to drill a hole for all the cords and yeah. cord management, um, that you have to go get like a drill bit that's specially for metal. Right. And it has to attach to like probably a power drill if you don't own one already. Like is, there, already one. is there a way to uh, get the wires in without this? Yes, so Joanna never drilled any holes in her cabinets. Nope. Oh. So it's definitely optional. The only thing is that if you don't drill a hole, then you have to make sure your wires are all, like thin enough to fit under the door. So oh, I see. So I had to make sure everything I bought had either like really thin wires or flat wires. <laughs> so it doesn't look as nice because you do see wires like running out the front of the cabinet. Right. And when I was building mine, I didn't know that people were drilling holes, so I didn't think of that as an option. Right. And now it's like too lazy to do it yeah now it seems like i i, I think a, a commonality with a lot of these uh setups is that uh yeah i think the the hole drilling oh this one doesn't have holes it does it's in oh the it back. does it's in the back oh. left oh okay yeah and then uh, i think a lot of the, the weather stripping is a, a thing that a lot of people are doing right it just kind of uh makes it so that the moisture sort of stays in mm -hmm. yeah yeah. With how many plants I have in each of these two cabinets, I don't need the weather stripping. I could actually probably take it off and Same. it would be better at this point. But when I first started, I didn't have these many plants. <laughs> so like probably even half or a third of what's currently in the cabinet. And I did need to increase the humidity. As far as like what you're saying, like asking about hardware, the, the drill bit for the hole. Um, and also it's kind of scary to drill the hole. The, right. Like you have to have a, like a lot of force, making sure that like there's nothing in the cabinet. It's empty. Some people have mentioned like glass shattering, but I think oh. they need to be a lot more careful because like you have to take all the glass shelves out. I think when Andrew was building it, he didn't even install the panels yet for the doors. Um, oh. Just because there's, there's so much vibration of right. the metal metal being drilled. Oh, so and, like if Andrew didn't do it for me, I would be way too. Um, scared to do it myself just because oh. like you need to like have use a lot of force so it might be like something that people who are considering this should do just kind of like right out the box right yes, before right they out the box. before they even like put it put it together mm -hmm. um yeah okay and like mine has rust along around the hole because i didn't treat it right, after right. and i c still could have treated it at some point yeah and then i maybe didn't People are getting people are getting better. I think like all the setups, uh, people are just kind of uh, um, getting better with the hacks. What are you choosing to do for for your lighting? So I see. Um, let me see the. I see your you have like a small sort of almost like a computer fan or a desk fan mm -hmm. kind of setup, and then uh, how did you decide on the lights? One it was the length. So the length of these monios. I think that's what you can how you pronounce the Monios um, T8s. And the so the length was really perfect for the Millsbo. Um, and then the light level, as far as like a T5, there's like sort of like Bur Burina is also a different um, brand. Mm -hmm. I didn't research any of these things. Um, it's, it's very like I can touch the bulb. It's like an LED and I can touch the bulb without it burning. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say there is there is a tiny bit of heat uh, coming from coming from the lights, uh, but yeah, I think you used uh, either magnets or these little hanging things. Yeah, um, Andrew used zip ties to zip tie the magnet mm -hmm. to the to the wire mm -hmm. grid, especially for like these two these two bottom ones, mm -hmm. versus the the one that's on top that can just magnify to the cabinet itself. Um, and then, so this is a desk, there's the desk fan, um, the grow lights, I think it's really personal preference for grow lights too because a lot of people also use the different color grow lights. Right. Um, I prefer like a, a more natural LED, mm -hmm. even LED lights can be like really neon looking um, or like fluorescent overhead lighting but this one's like kind of a yellow glow so it seems yeah. like more natural. Yeah. Wait. Wait, are we 
are we just not going to talk about any of the plants? <laughs>